All right, guys, we're back. Um, I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, the, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in our grades or our performance. Um, then after this, you, it's not going to make sense right now, but you'll see later for conditional formatting purposes. We're going to add two columns in between each of these indicators. Now, why are we doing this? These are for averages and standard deviations. Some of them don't actually need it, but I'm just doing it to all of them right now. And why do we need averages and standard deviations? Two reasons. One, maybe we'll want to display them. Number two, we're going to use them in our conditional formatting when we apply colors to things to identify when scenarios are above or below a certain number of standard deviations um, above or below the uh, the mean. So this is attendance. This will be the value, and then this is the average STD, average STD, etc. And we'll set this up a little bit later. Um, but now we have the concept of kind of what we're going through here and the number of columns that we need to have. And then we just need to clean up our dat data set a little bit um, because I want to display. I know that I want to display the attendance and the injuries and the exercise stuff. These are text values. I want to display them in numbers. So right now I have a one for attended, uh, one for excused absence, one for attended but did not complete their data. I'm just going to categorize these three scenarios pretty much nothing to do with excused, but whether or not they were here, um, whether or not they were here and did not complete their data as number two and if they weren't here, it's a number three. Instead of having it in three different columns, and then with the injury statuses, I'm going to just do the same thing where they were either full, limited, or out um, as a one, two, or three, as opposed to using text. And you'll see why a little bit later. But again, I'm just going through this. Hopefully, you can follow along. You can always pause it and look at the formulas. Um, I'm doing attendance refined equals if so if let me see if and so if the attendance is equal to one someone's here and attended but did not complete data equals or not equal to one then one that means that someone is here now if Attendance is equal to one if and attendance is equal to one and attended but did not complete data is equal to one. Then number two, else none of those are true. Three. Now I should have an equation. I should have one, twos, and threes. Great. And I'm going to do what I always do. If there's an error for whatever reason, let's just make it blank for now to not screw up our visualizations for now. And I'm going to do injury refined. If injury status, well, let me think about this for a second. When we're relaying the injury status information, do we want to include people that weren't here? I don't know if someone filled out the injury information and they weren't here, but just in case, maybe I maybe I accommodate for that in case someone does end up filling out inf injury information, even though they're not here. So if and attendance is one, if they were here, but did not complete data is not equal to one, so they actually were here. I could do it this way, but I'm not going to do it this way because I already have this formula working. So I'm going to say if this is one, which we already know means that they were here and completed their data, if and this is one, injury status equals full. Then 
1. If and this equals 1, injury status equals, oops, equals limited 2. If this equals 1, so I'm forgetting the and, if and, that equals 1, injury status equals out, then 3, else, we'll just say, we're not going to use it, but we'll say if, if none of those are true, let's make it blank, and let's see what happens. Okay, so now people that are not here are considered blanks. We should have ones, twos, and maybe threes and blanks. Okay, perfect. So we have that stuff sorted out. And I didn't take a lot of care. I didn't go through this in a lot of detail, but I will later once we start visualizing things. I might notice that something is awry, um, and that could certainly happen. So now when we go here, we're going to do our first formula, which is attendance. And what I want in this column is a one, two, or three based on the attendance refined column that I have there. And remember, there are a couple different things going on here. First is it's going to be for a specific date. Let me put in a specific date just to see if things are working. All right, so we know that people were here on 121, 2020. And we're also going to use the past X number of days potentially to aggregate information. And I'll fill that in in a little bit later because I want to test one thing first. What we have to do in this column is we have to pretty much give it two scenarios. The first is if there are no past X number of days, then we just want the person's average for that date or what their value was on that date. But if there are past X number of days that we fill in, instead of getting that one value for that date, we're going to want the average over whatever the date range is or whatever that date is. Um, minus the number of days that we decided. We're going to want an average of the value within that range. So to do this, let's start out with an if, because if this, and notice I'm putting dollar signs around B2, that's to lock this cell, because if I copy it down, then um, the cell will go down, this cell will go down with it, It'll be B3, B4, B5, and it'll be looking at the wrong cell. If B2 equals blank, so if there are no past X number of days, we want the average ifs, we want the average of what? Of table, daily, attendance, refined. We want to put that value in there. If and only if table daily eight, if the date is equal to this date, and again I'm gonna lock it. Reagan. Sorry, um that was that was my dog. Alright, her name's Reagan, by the way. So Okay, so we want the average of the attendance only if the date is equal to that date and table daily, the code name is equal to this code name. That's the first thing. So if this is blank, then we just want the average value for that date, which is the value of that date, because there's only one entry per date. And if that's not true, we want the average ifs. We want the same thing. So pretty much, I'm just going to copy this. And, and, and I'll, I'll organize, let me organize a little bit. So that, here, let me, let me organize this a little bit. And that's holding down Alt and clicking Enter. So if that's not true, we want the average of that, of the attendance. But when this date is, uh, 
less than or equal to and you want that's the syntax for it and table daily eight is greater than sometimes this confuses me a little bit is greater than or equal to and that date minus the number of days that we say p2 lock that in all right well, let's close some parentheses here and the code name is equal to the code name and all the other stuff perfect so let me i'm going to do the if error like i do with all my stuff so there are no errors the person probably i don't know what their deal is on that date i'll have to figure it out uh oh their code name wasn't in the database but let me let me pick a date where everyone's code name was in the database 130. so if i go to 130 2020 Everyone should have a number. Perfect. And now, let me just make sure this is a number with decimals to see if it works. And I didn't mean to do that with the date, though. Um, now let's say, you know what? I don't want their attendance status for this day. I want their average attendance status over the past seven days from that day. All right, so a couple people, their numbers change. So we know that it's it's working. Um, and if we apply some conditional formatting to this, like one is green, and the further away from one you get on the high side is red, then you can kind of get a sense for each person uh, how frequently they've been in class or not over a certain period of time. Maybe I'll put this to the end date, or I don't even know what the end date is, 2.5 is 2020. And change this to past, I don't know, 28 days. And we have over the past month, starting at 2, 5, 2020, we have some average average attendance statuses here. And in the next video, I'm gonna apply this to some to our other metrics. Uh, we're gonna get the annual averages and standard deviations for those metrics. And we're gonna start organizing things a little bit. So I hope that was helpful, at least for now. And I'll catch you in the next one.